What's up guys, welcome back to the FNG Academy. Buck here, former Green Beret, here to help you guys. Get selected. <laughs> Feels good to get like in the old format again and do videos. It's like man, coming home. It. Yeah. So if you guys didn't know that for a long time, the channel started with Talking Heads, and I would just turn the camera on and talk, give information. Kurt did some Talking Heads, and we would just tell you guys the information. But after a year and a half of that, um, and dropping videos constantly, it was like we need to start showing these guys instead of just always talking about it. Yeah. So then we transitioned into showing you as much as we could. If you haven't seen it, I've done. The underwater PT test, we've done 20 mile rucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done, you know, foot care kit breakdowns. We've done pretty much anything we could think of to show you guys. Uh, Kurt did a bag breakdown going from the ruck trainer all the way down to a civilian bag for training. So you have all the options and what, you know, the benefits for both. Um, running videos, running tips. We've failed miserably at long hikes. Yeah. We put ourselves out there and, yeah. <laughs> and put ourselves to the test. Swing and a miss. We went to Catalina Island and just got our asses kicked by that island. If Oof. you missed that video, go check it out. Um, but then we wanted to bring it back and jump back in the driver's seat and, and get you guys some information, um, especially now that Kurt's got running the mentor program. And so he's got a ton of questions that you guys ask all the time. And then we could start giving that back. So we have... Yes, we run a mentor channel. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have group coaching. We also have uh, members-only exclusive content channel. So if you just want to support the channel, you can sign up for that. It's called Tier 3. Uh, but we're always going to give free content to the YouTube channel as well. So thank you guys for all your support. We appreciate you. Check out the online store. We have a lot of SF equipment. Uh, Ruck Trainer sold out. So sign up for the email list so you can catch that next drop. Um, the first drop ran out in seven hours. Mm -hmm. A lot so, of people from the email list are the ones that took those. Yeah, so the email list got to scoop them up. So we let the email list bef know before, a few hours before we did an official drop. So they had time to get theirs. Um, and then most of them were gone by the time that it officially dropped. So make sure you signed up for the email list. So today we're gonna talk about the hardest part of SFAS. So it's cool to do it with Kurt and I, because mm -hmm. then we, could, we both have different stories about what was the hardest part for each of us. So. Let's start it off. Kurt, what was the hardest part of SFAS for you? Oof. You know, I honestly, I think for me, the hardest part of SFAS was probably the one that a lot of people are scared of, and that's land nav. Oh, yeah, land nav. And so for me, like, I didn't have any real experience doing land nav before, right? So I was, I was in the Army. I was a, a 68 Whiskey at the time. Not for very long. I'd only been in my unit for four months, I think, when I went to selection. So we did one land nav training in uh, my unit at Fort Riley, but it was terrible. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn anything. We didn't really do anything. We had one guy on our, our unit that was a uh, former Eagle Scout, and all we ba basically did was just walk behind him. <laughs> so he, he did it, and we just walked behind him like a trail of ducks, basically. Yeah. So I didn't have any experience doing that. So for me... Like when you get there, they will teach you everything you need to know, right? It's a multi-day event when you leave. You're at Camp McCall for selection. Then remember, they put you on a bus, took you to, what is it, Hoffman Training Grounds or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so you're there for multiple days, and they use the crawl, walk, run technique that you get in the Army, right? So they sit you down, and they tell you, teach you all the fundamentals and principles on a whiteboard. Um, and then you go to your walk phase, which is where they have a small land nav course set up, and they basically go there along with you. Um, and then your run phase is when you get out and you're actually doing the star course and that's all on you by yourself Terrifying. Um, it's exactly terrifying. so scary to get lost one of the worst feelings on the planet is getting lost and that's probably for When I was there, I think land nav was the thing that got the most guys. Yeah, and it, that's why everybody's so scared of it because it's not something That's really easy to practice especially if you don't know how to do it. Yeah um, So for me, I, I remember that first night going out and just being completely overwhelmed because mm -hmm. when you're doing it You start at night and you go all the way into the morning So you're doing it in dark all the way into light and you're just by yourself It's all on you and I remember being like completely overwhelmed and like hearing noises and just being like completely like scared or of like whatever's going on in the woods I had no idea what it was um, well, we know that there's because you're doing water crossing constantly and we know yeah. that there's uh, poisonous snakes in the water Yeah, and not just a few like what are those? What are the ones called the moccasins the yeah. water moccasins? Yeah are 
prominent. Oh, you see them all over. They're all over the place. I remember one time we were rucking, and they were like, it was really hot, so like, you guys cool off. And so they were like, go walk into the lake and then come back out. So as we're walking into the lake, they're like, never mind, get out, get out, get out. There was water moccasins swimming all oh, in the lake, like oh. a whole bunch of them. And we're like, what the fuck? And so for me, like, I grew up in the city. I was a city boy. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of the woods at night, and I'm like, I don't belong out here. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing here? So then like that, there's water moccasins. It's, there's, it's I don't terrifying. know what other what else is in the woods there. Yeah. But at night when you can't see, your mind just starts playing tricks on you. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, everything's there, and it's all coming to get you. And I remember just being really frustrated, like getting stuck in draws, being just pissed yep. off, and like I can't move. Um, one thing that helps a lot, uh, especially for me, was the being really fit under a ruck. Because there's times when, in the Q course, which I think they dropped land nav in the Q course. I don't think they do it in the Q oh, course Oh, it's a gate. Yeah, I don't think they do. So, and that was ex exponentially harder doing it in the Q course. Mm -hmm. But there was times when my movement was like miles. It was like so far. And I it was an easy path, but it was super, super far. And I would just run and I'd just jog to, 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 mm -hmm. as fast as I could to just like gain as much ground. Cause so that's one thing that you could do to your advantage is get good at moving out with your ruck on. Because let's say, you know, you know where your point is because you've been that route before or you've just came from there. Mm -hmm. You could just step out and get, you know, to that last known location yeah. as quickly as possible. So land nav was definitely one. If I would have to pick, the hardest thing for me was down pilot. Okay. I thought... I, and the reason I thought down pilot was going to take me out. Like, I didn't think I could survive down pilot. Like, cause I, I remember stepping at one point with all the weight on my back and I could feel my hip like Ooh. shift out of the socket Yeah. because there was just so much weight on my back. And so I stepped, I must've stepped weird and I felt my hip Ooh. pop out and I was like, Oh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I stepped again and then I was like, okay, it's okay. And then I stepped and it's, it felt like it slid a little bit, like it was just loose now in the ooh, hip socket. Ooh. So I thought I thought I was gonna pop my hip out of place and I, I literally, under the weight of down pilot, I had to ask myself if this was about to be it. And I was like, am I, am I about to pop my leg out of the socket or uh. something? And I was like, this it feels like it. I was like, I'm not gonna stop, um, but it feels like it's gonna pop out. So, and so I thought that was going to be it for me. If you're not familiar with down pilot, down pilot is an evolution during team week that is simulating that a pilot was shot down behind enemy lines and now your team is going to rescue him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you're given basically a bunch of steel or iron, I don't know what they're made of, poles. Yeah, I think it's just steel. And then you have to create a frame and then you get to the pilot and the pilot is just a huge fucking sandbag. Yeah. Like massive. This thing is hundreds so of pounds. Heavy. And so now you have to, as a team, come up with how you're going to transport this pilot using the poles, basically everything that you have. Like yeah. You can do whatever you want, but generally what happens is people build a four-sided frame mm -hmm. and the pilot is suspended from the center or something. And if which, you're a dumbass, you'll, you'll build it so the pilot hangs and swings. It's like a pendulum and at that point. And then that way it really fucks you because you have to use all the handles on the bag or figure out a way to get them connected yep. tight because if it starts swinging on you you're you're, you're fucked yep. you're gonna have a long long day and so now once you get this thing suspended now you have to travel with him to yeah. another location and it's it's bad like i remember our down pilot um they were going to swap out so you have you know four people carrying or however your team decides to do it and everybody else is walking on the outside getting their break time in and then after a certain amount of time mm -hmm. generally you guys will switch out and I remember one guy went to switch out and somebody stumbled or something and the pole hit the dude in the head and he was just out. Oh, like, shit. Like, boom, hit the ground. But it was quick. He got back up. Um, but as he's walking, the cadre is walking next to him and they notice he's, like, stumbling a little bit. Yeah. And they pull him to the side and they do, like, a quick check and they're like, ah, threw him in the back of the uh, truck. No. And he, we never saw him again. So I'm assuming they were concerned about concussion or yeah. something like that. Uh, but, yeah, they put him in the truck and he was gone. That, that, that down pilot is no joke. Yeah, down pilot... Down pilot almost broke me. Yeah. And I knew it almost broke me. Another hard thing was uh, the final ruck. The, the trek, the yeah. The trek was was like, this sucks. And luckily, I had another guy with me. Mm -hmm. And we just kept leapfrogging each other the whole fucking way. So it literally turned into a race between me and him. Not in a competitive way. Mm -hmm. But like he started taking off. And I'd have to catch up. And then I got a, a second win. So I'd start taking off. And he'd have to catch up. That's good. And so we just kept that going. And we ended up like smoking it and just getting it done. But it was so long and so many miles that it was just like, this 
fucking sucks. Yeah. My knees were hurt. My back was hurt. I was like, this is brutal. It, it's just like one foot after the other, yeah. and you're like, how much longer can this be? Yeah, and that gets to you because you're, you're trying to game it all the time. Like, yeah. Oh, it's probably 20 miles, so if, if we do this route, or if it's, it, maybe it's 22 miles, and you're like, fuck, it might be 30, man. Yeah. I don't fucking know. This is lasted forever. By that point, too, of SFAS, you've gone so much around Cape yeah. McCall. You start to pick up on like landmarks, like that big water tower with the yeah. checkers on it, or certain intersections with a tank on it or something like that. So you know about where you are and you're like, all right, well, I know if we make a left up here, that's only like a mile and a half back to camp. That's probably it. And then you get up there and they make a right and you're like, oh, fuck, like yeah. it's going to be so long. So if I had to pick the one <clears throat> hardest thing about SFS, I would say that it's getting out of your own head yep. and not thinking about the next day. So focusing on the task at hand to me was the hardest part. It's a constant struggle. One minute you'll be good and you're like, I just have to get through this spot. And then all of a sudden you're like, we're only two days in. Oh, fuck. Yep. <laughs> and then and then you get back to your bunk and you're like, oh my God, how am I going to do this again the next day? And then you have to say, okay, don't worry about it. We'll worry about that tomorrow. Let's just get some sleep. I just need some sleep and I'll recover and I'll feel better. Mm -hmm. And then we'll try it again. So the hardest part is keeping yourself out of thinking about what you have left and just focusing on one day at a time, one meal at a time, yep. you know, one iteration or event at a time. Yeah, that's how we ended up breaking up the day. It's like, like you said, if you think about the whole thing, it's too much to handle. Yeah. Break it down by the day, or if that, you know, be like, hey, we got three more hours until lunch mm -hmm. or something, you know, yep. break it down to the smallest part that you can. And I think, you know, one thing I tell people in the mentorship program when they ask is like, whenever you start to get flustered or like me doing land nav when I just felt completely overwhelmed, all you got to do is just revert back to your fundamentals, right? Because they teach you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. So just revert back to your fundamentals, calm yourself down, rely on the fundamentals and trust the process. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, selection, it, it's, it's difficult, but it's not this big, scary monster that everybody puts it out to be. People pass all the time. All right all the time yeah and then and you can do it just don't psych yourself out and self-select yourself yeah so and you'll, you'll be surprised especially in land nav how when the frustration sets in mm -hmm. when the fear of failure sets in the stupid things you'll do trying to take shortcuts yeah so all of a sudden you're like oh the points right there i could push through that draw yeah and it'll just be thick ass vegetation you're like if i could just push through that i'll save myself from having to go all the way around it that'll save me a ton of time yeah. and then you'll get stuck i've been stuck in in uh thick vegetation for multiple hours mm -hmm. so i'm pretty sure it was coming out of scuba road uh we crossed scuba road i was like guppying for air i didn't realize how deep it was <laughs> so you got your rucksack on crossing a water crossing and then I go to cross into the other side and I pick the wrong spot. It's super dense vegetation. I spent two hours trying to get through and out of the fucking water crossing yeah. because the vegetation was so thick. By the time I got out of that, like I literally had to sit down, even though I was worried about time and like recollect myself <laughs> because I just wanted to fucking take my rucksack and throw it <laughs> and then light it on fire and burn the whole fucking vegetation down. I was so pissed. And so you just have to like not let that frustration, not that fear. And the fear really sets in when you get to where your point's supposed to be and it's not there. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. Like all of a sudden your whole world just comes crashing down on you and you start to panic. So you have to, you have to breathe, take a deep breath, relax and be like, if you followed the fundamentals, mm -hmm. you're close. Now just make some good decisions. So what is a good decision? Well, how do I find a point? that should be near me. Okay, what if I find some high ground? So I always like would look for some high ground and then I would not just run to that high ground because now you just gave away your last known position. Yeah, exactly. I would shoot an azimuth to that high ground, pace myself up that high ground. So that way, once I got there, if I couldn't see anything, I could reverse azimuth back to where I was. Yep. And so that's the part that will fuck people. They'll start panicking and they're like, high ground. They'll run up to the high ground. Yeah. Well, guess what? Where were you, dickhead? Exactly. Or start like just walking in yeah. circles. Doing this circles. And next thing you know, you have no idea where you are. You don't know where you are. You're always tied to your last known position or even if that's a vague because you did the best you could with pace count mm -hmm. and, and azimuth. You always want to like check with current pace count. So like shoot a new azimuth to a high top count left heel strike okay i'm 100 meters 
from my last known position. I could set up a reverse azimuth and get exactly back to where I was. And then once I'm back to where, uh, that known position, I could reshoot a new one to a different location and go check that area. Yep. So never just abandon your game plan and start do, making stupid decisions based on panicking. And that's all reverse the trust in the fundamentals because yeah. that's what they teach you. Yep. So we hope that helps, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the channel. Thank you for, if you get anything out of these videos, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let us know if you appreciate the Talking Heads coming back a little bit um, and just getting some stories. I think it's important when Kurt and I do it because then we get a different approach. We mm -hmm. get his perspective and not just always mine, mine, mine because it, it just gets... It gets repetitive if I'm the only one talking about my experience. And everybody's experience is different. Right. So it's good to have kind of a little variety too. Yeah. So we hope you liked that video and we'll see you on the next one. If your dream is to become a Green Beret, then you need all the help you can get. We have an upcoming seminar held by Green Berets in San Antonio, Texas on November 12th. We will break down exactly what you need to be preparing for, the mental aspects, the physical aspects, and make sure that you have everything you need to get selected the first time. We'll work on team building exercises and make sure that you guys know the importance of working together as a team and what is expected of you in SFAS.